Hello, hello. We're live. Hey, Saad. Howdy, Sandy. How are you? I had to start with the howdy with all the signatures. Very, <laughs> very on point. Yeehaw. Um, I, I, I feel like I'm fully in my country era right now because I've been watching a lot of trailers for the movie Twisters. Yeah. Um, and, and it's like, I'm from Oklahoma now, you guys. Country, country is in right now. Every, everything's country. I think Zach Bryan songs and all that stuff. Look, it's very easy for me to digress, so I'm going to flip it back over to you. I yeah, can go yeah. on change. <laughs> We've got two chatty Cathy's on the AMA today. Um, welcome, everybody, to our July Pocus AMA. Super excited to have you all here. I am pumped because we have Saad Khan here today, who's going to talk to us all about his signal-based selling strategy um, I'm sure you, if you're on this uh, AMA, you've probably heard a lot about signals on LinkedIn and you might be wondering, what the hell are they? How do I actually implement them? Saad is one of the few people who I think is uh, already doing this and has been doing it, I think, for years. Um, but the technology has gotten better, so he's gotten better at doing it. And he's going to share a lot of his uh, his secrets with us today. Um, quick housekeeping before we dive in. If you have questions, please put them in the chat. Also, introduce yourself in the chat and let us know where you're from, where you're working, uh, just so Saad can get a sense of who's in the audience today. Um, also, this is being recorded, so you will have access to the recording after our chat today. Um, so let me get started with an intro of Saad. Saad Khan is the Director of Sales and BD at Aligned. Before that, he was instrumental in growing the BD functions at Enable and Vendor. And prior to that, he also helped build BD content and product-led sales motions at Dooley. Um, and now he's doing the same at Aligned. Um, like I mentioned, Saad is one of the the few folks who's been really like beating the signal-based selling drum before it was called that for years now. Um, and he's he advises go-to-market teams on how to integrate signals into their own outbound strategy. So we're Excited to have Saad on the AMA today. Saad, is there anything I missed there? No, that was very thorough. Thank you. I hope that wasn't my write-up and all of it. If it was, I need to tone tone it down. But thank you. Uh, no, 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 no. It's great. Um, I'm going to kick off with some questions for Saad. But like I said, please add your questions for him in the chat as you think of them. And we'll we'll get to them throughout the conversation. And we'll also leave some time at the end. Um, but maybe, Saad, we can just start with, with the basics. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you arrived at Align. Specifically, want to talk a little bit about your move from marketing to sales and and uh, kind of tell us a little bit about Align's go-to-market motion. Yeah. So uh, again, thank you for the introduction. Hello, everybody. I see a lot of familiar friends here at Name, so let's get into it. Um, I, true, real answer, I was hired at Align because of the work we did at Duke. And let's open that up. So I have a marketing background, degree in marketing, kind of have always been very intrigued about the why behind human consumption, psychology behind human consumption, things like that. Um, so pretty nerdy about it. Um, my transition to sales happened because I grew up in a sales family uh, and then decided to go on the marketing route. And I was doing SEO work under white lights and I absolutely hated it. Then I quit. And started doing uh, brand ambassador work. Just, you know, got to uh, work the Raptors finals. And through just networking, found somebody that referred me to Clio. Um, never looked back ever since. Um, Clio is where kind of it all started. I was actually in a team at Clio that evaluated Dooley and Scratchpad, which was our competitor. So full circle moment, a year later, Dooley reached out. They were saying that they're not going to build a traditional BDR team, but they want to build a team where BDRs can close logos below certain uh, employee range and the BDRs get to convert a variety of leads that they had. And this was actually, uh, once we got there at, at Clio, what we used to do was we had a strategy called the AQL strategy, aka converting webinar leads, content leads, and event leads. And the messaging there was simply not, hey, you attended a webinar, downloaded the report. What prompted your interest? So when I went to Dooley, my boss asked, I asked Michelle Peach, he's a VP of Sailor Data Org and Drift or that, very experienced. I asked Michelle, Michelle, what's my target? She says, your target is 10,000 trial signups. I said, can you give me a number? Pipeline number? She said, no. Go 10,000 trial signups. I'm like, how do I do that? She said, go talk to marketing, figure it out. Um, 
that's where marketing alignment really kicked into gear. Marketing at Dooley was also tied to revenue, not just numbers. And marketing basically says, so, uh, so she's not asking for trials. She's asking for you to drive enough traffic on the website that they convert to trials. So we started creating a lot of content to get the company, get just, you know, by association. Oh, okay, cool. You guys are talking sense. Maybe the product you're selling is also sensible. So at that time, we had Clearbit on our website that used to capture co company level information of people that are on the website. Two plus two equals four. If somebody from X company is looking at a line, I can just drill down on the individuals that might be there and go prospecting to them. And the second core thing that we did was there were 10,000 signups there, maybe more. In PLG, activation failure exists. 40% people that sign up, that's across the board, the sign up to a freemium will never convert or see the value. So we started going after every single sign up, BDR, AE, marketer, random, everybody. We went after every single them, uh, single one of them, and the result was this. Um, so I don't have, yeah. Kept the receipts, kept the receipts. So we basically created an engine where the BDRs were getting comp or leads below 50 employees. We used to convert them and close them as fast as possible. And any org that was above 50 employees, we used to evaluate the trial signups and re send them to the AEs. Within one quarter, we had a 431% increase in qualified pipeline. And then that's when we kind of know, okay, there might be something here. And then we started doing strategic partnerships with 30 Mr. Presidents Club, JB Sales, a lot of that stuff. It got to the point where people were like, hey, we hear Dooley all the time. What the fuck is Dooley? Sorry but for my language. So we actually launched a campaign called that. Fast forward, closing the loop. How did I come to Align? Um, Michelle, when we all left, Dooley became Align's first consultant. And she placed my first BDR here as an AE. And when I left Dooley, I was like, the perfect environment that I'm looking for is a PLG product with this strategy, et cetera, et cetera. So Daniel came and helped the team build out the content strategy. And I called, emailed the EO saying that, hey, whenever uh, go to market orgs, create the content strategy, it becomes a brand play and they struggle with converting the pipeline. So fast forward, here we are. Um, and that is the motion that we're trying to further develop, further build, and just, you know, we'll get more into it. Yeah, I love this story. Um, and your passion for content and signals and all of that um, really comes through, Saad. So, I mean, let's get to the the main topic at hand here. I want to understand, you know, when did you first starting using signals in your sales strategy? And I think maybe just start with the basics of what is a signal to you um, and then tell us about like the aha moments that you started to have with signal based selling. You know, you already showed us the results, the proof is in the pudding. So like clearly what you're doing was working. Um, but walk us through kind of the beginning stages of uh, getting to understand signals and understanding their value to sales. The beginning stage was when I was a BDR at Clio. One day, uh, under every account level, Marketo went live. Marketo showed me a full history of people interacted with their content in the past previous close loss. So when I was calling them, I wasn't cold calling them. I was just sharing the context. And some people, people used to give me way richer answers. And that could hurt. So, and some might call it lead scoring and things like that. Fast forward, that's where we are right now. So when we came to Aligned, uh, when I came to Aligned, the industry was, this was right out of the recession. Things were up and down. And I started seeing some people, the company that sold signal-based products, website de-anonymization, talk about just that. Something clicked there. As a business, we thought about, okay, what if we can invest in this strategy and what would it take to create those signals? Now, let's clarify what signals are. Um, there's a lot of noise that, oh, a job change trigger is a signal. No, 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 no. It's a trigger. It's always been there. We've always prospected job changes. So the idea here is a combination of triggers becomes signals. And in in and in um and visually, the way we think about signals over here at Aligned is the following. The aha moment happened in this way. We essentially created a pipeline funnel with signals. So at the top of the funnel is website visitors. And the idea here is I just want to add more signals to things and see if the score becomes hot enough that I have every right to go after them. So an example over here is one of the things that we do is first we look at is, is a company on our website? Great. Then we go and check our individuals from this company on our website. Better. Then we'll go and check, have they signed up? Because that helps me validate that, okay, 
if 60% of the people are not going to come back to the website, the 40% of the people are absolutely want to use a line and there's some intent there. And then the final bit of that, by this point, we start seeing some conversions. And the final bit of that is we've created Tableau dashboards and we put together a list of all lookalike companies that book demos with us and become our customers. That becomes our outbound engine, uh, cold outbound engine. The companies that are on the website that don't get de-anonymized become the cold companies we prospect into. And then our hottest, hottest, hottest leads that actually convert 37% faster and faster than our inbound demo requests are our signal-based leads that are website plus sign up plus social engagement plus Tableau dashboards uh, where we check for virality, paywalls, and things like that. I know that was a mouthful, but um, that's our basic orchestration and it gets more complex from there. Yeah. Okay. So let me play back the framework for you. So the way that you're thinking about signals is through this kind of like funnel view. Um, and your goal is to kind of create as much warmth through like signals at the top of the funnel as possible because those leads will then convert down um, at a higher rate. And um, so it sounds like it's a combination of website visitors, uh, some social signals, and then also your own product usage. So like once yeah. they sign up, what are they doing in the product? And it's that combination together that creates the the strength of an account or a lead. Um, yeah. Uh, walk me through a little bit about kind of how you chose those signals as part of yeah. as part of that mix, um, and then how how like granular should somebody who's doing this for the first time get? Because this sounds like you know you guys have created a really like robust framework, but like is there maybe a an easier starting point for folks? Yes, there is. And I'll give this away uh, at the end of the session. So we built the entire framework and playbook for PLG, non-PLG organizations. Uh, again, playbooks are a starting point. So take some things away that might be relevant and others that might not be not. First thing first is to, how did we get to those signals? Was first getting our house in order and foundation set. So to set the foundation, we have framework that we follow, which is just CRM and sales and marketing alignment. First thing that anybody can do, and we did, was we just mapped out our best customers and thought about the people that engage with us the most, the best NRR scores. And we go and add those accounts, prospect into them. And if they start engaging with us on socials, that's where like, okay, something's interesting. If they'll follow us with us on socials, that's interesting. This has nothing to do with PLG. Second, we actually report, we started reporting on it. We started weekly reporting on are these companies that we hypothesize might be our best customers because we have their competitors, could they be engaging with us? And every week we started giving that list of accounts, those titles, those person, uh, just every single thing to sales and marketing as like an outbound care package. And we got all these data points together. These are the data points that helped us, help guide us, solidify just, you know, what are going to, where do the companies and signals fit in? It's like if the framework is right, signal could become any combination of uh, of events. Yeah. So I think like deeply understanding your ICP and understanding who are like, and go look at your existing closed one to understand what that is. Figure out what those conditions are and then kind of like reverse engineer into yeah. the, the right signals to be chasing. Yeah. There's no magic pill. It absolutely, this all just requires absolute outbound orchestration talking to your marketing team. Say, again, that's also a big myth that I want to quash. This is no one-size-fits-all solution. It's not that, oh, I found the signal. I send them a generic message. It's going to convert. Past this point, more work begins. A signal for me is detect work to go see if there's more things happening there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. One thing that we talked about was uh, like the power of the signal is that like you have some kind of like in the moment relevance, right? Like there's a, something that happened or a combination of things that happened that indicate to you that you're going to be super relevant to this buyer in this moment. Um, and I think that's a little bit different than what we've historically considered personalization, which was, I think, you know, when you think about the old way of doing things outbound, that personalization was like the holy grail. Um, so talk a little bit about the difference between personalization versus driving relevance with signals. Yeah. Uh, please don't hate me. I have been banging the drum for personalization, but with the world of signals, I think we've moved past personalization and we're in contextualization now. 
how do you contextualize the story of what's going on? Um, true story. In the start, our emails weren't converting because we were trying too hard to sell the product. Then on LinkedIn, we started sending this message and it started converting like wildfire to sales leaders and end users. The message is very simply this right here. And it's a little vague. I say, hey, Jeff, notice you checked out a line. I'm not saying hey, you're on the website or you downloaded. Please correct me if I'm mistaken. Would you be open to learning what prompted interest? Right away, hey, yeah, let's have some, some time discuss. We're trying to get rid of uh, just, you know, we're, we're in active deal cycle. Um, if we go in our Apollo stats uh, and look at messages going out to sales leaders that are on the website that have not converted, sales leaders, we have a 10% reply rate, 3.9% interest rate. The message is literally this. For sale leaders, obviously, we add a little bit more, contextualize, personalize a little bit, touch up a little bit. But if you have the right list, then you don't have to stress too much about the message. And one of our highest converting message in that sequence is um, is actually a screenshot from Mike Gallardo, sales director at Deal. Send out S social proof in there. Yep. Yep. So you still have to you still have to do the work, and I'll show you everybody an example of. Um, so that's an example that yeah, if you have the right list and right strategy, then the message should convert if you're going to the right people. But what if? Let's be real. That's not always right. We got to have multiple buckets. Let's show you. Let's show everybody an example of how we found somebody on the website in the funnel, how we tracked them on uh, LinkedIn, how we reached out to the end user, found some data and then send a personalized message to their sales manager to book a meeting. Um, if no questions, I can jump into it, but I know I kind of like went fast earlier, so I'll pause for a second. Yeah, I think we may have covered this one question, which is about like reverse engineering the signals. I don't know if there was anything additional you wanted to add there, Saad, about the process for reverse engineering, uh, engineering signals. I think maybe some folks on the call would like to know um, like who was involved in that process, was yeah. it led by marketing? Was it led by sales, et cetera? That's a great question. Uh, I think, oh, I'll use an analogy here. Um, somebody once asked me, Saad, in the world of signals, uh, I actually, uh, this was on the GTM Fund webinar as well, and it really hit. Um, hi, Sophie. So somebody asked me, Saad, in the world of signals, what tools should I buy for my reps? And I said, it's a wrong question. What are you getting yourself to create a system where all you have to do is give your reps a lead that they can convert? So I'll use the analogy from soccer, if anybody watches. Pep Guardiola is one of the best managers in the world. If you ask any of Pep's players what's it like working with Pep, they say it's very robotic but very liberating. AKA, Pep tells his players exactly where to be, what zone to pass in, when the ball flies, where they have to be, and all they have to be all in the back of the net. So the onus here is on the sales leaders. We're a 25-people team, five-people sales team, one-person marketer. So we're kind of doing it all together. I am guiding my marketing team. Again, none of this would be happening if we did not have a strong and marketing content engine. So it's very uh, uh, symbiotic is the word. Um, so the framework that I shared earlier, it requires you to talk to your marketing, map out your accounts, think about why are these people happy, do customer interviews, why are they liking you, why are they engaging with you, warm people up ahead of time, create content in communities, whether it's Discord, LinkedIn, everywhere. That's a good starting point. Uh, of reverse engineering it. Um, and I'll share the framework again after the call. I hope that answered the question. If not, please DM me. Very happy to chat. I think that was great. And I, I really love the point of you can use a signal strategy to warm up cold accounts, but uh, or you can use it more for like that direct, I'm trying to immediately book a meeting, yeah. I'm trying to like close revenue. But I think it's valid to use the signal-based strategy kind of like at the very top of the funnel and closer towards where you're trying to drive down to a conversion. We do have one more question in the chat um, from Jax. What kind of signals would you recommend prioritizing? Should there only be one? I think this is a really tough question because it so depends on your product, Jax. So I don't know if you want to put uh, additional context there about your product, but Saad, do you have any initial thoughts? Jax is actually one of our customers as well. So Jax, nice to see you here. Uh, Jax, a few things. Are you a PLG org? Are you a sales-led org? And also, I absolutely can give you a defining signal, website visitor, de-anonymized. Think about this. We're now in a world where we can we know exactly who's on the website, what pages they're looking at. Again, 
that's an indication to go do better work, not be like, hey, you're on the website and work with me. <laughs> yeah, we love the website visitor signal. I think it's great. Um, yeah. Great. Uh, Saad, you wanted to jump into telling us a little bit more about, about the framework, yeah. how you do this. Yeah. So let's go from start to finish. Reed already knows this. I've already shouted them out multiple times. So uh, no issues here. Ne Reed's a senior AE. Reach out to him with this message. We also go bottoms up. This is also a great way to go bottoms up, find messaging that's going to convert with sales leaders. So um, asked him what he's using Align for. He said, yeah, we're using it for maps. And um, this is something the business is looking at. I said, "All." I said, great. Can I reach out to your manager and can I CC you? He said, yes, absolutely. Then we do some sales work. So this is what Niles' website says. Uh, a trick I used to use as a BDR is you can personalization, right? If you use the inspect tool, you can go and change the website homepage of any uh, any website and pattern disrupt, right? Like, uh, hi, Sandy. Imagine you get a video and somebody and somebody's changed the website home screen. You would want to, like, you'd want to click it. So don't mind my email notification. I'm going to hide them right away. Perfect. So reference read mutual action plan. Personalize the video. You guys saw what uh, what the website says. I changed the website home screen saying align maps that are collaborative, no email ping pong, because that's something she had mentioned in one of her posts as well. Um, center the email, no no response. That's it. Personalized emails sometimes don't get it. Get, get a response, follow it up with her. Then finally she reached out saying, hey, oh my God, I love this. I never open any quote unquote cold emails. That quote unquote cold is the world we're in now. Um, that's an example of how you can go from bottoms up and user still do the hard sales work and get a nice hot meeting. Yeah. Well, I love that you showcase Align's product and Aligned is part of Pocus's Signal Partner Program. So let's talk a little bit about some of those signals that you can get from a um, sales deal room like Aligned. Like what's, what are some of those key signals that uh, sellers should be using to... Yeah have more engagement or move a deal forward it's 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 such a beautiful kind of like full kind of tying it together is if focus is giving you all the signals and orchestration about building the messaging what accounts to go after aligned is giving you the signals about what's happening with these accounts now that in your sales cycle what it's giving you deal risk and intent signals how to move things faster how to close them around faster so if we just think about a world of where all we're doing is just an analyzing data at all times and then pivoting strategy and executing based on what the data tells us where to go. Um, small example is we had a deal that was supposed to close in December. It did not close. Last week, I saw their a, a senior CRO just in the deal room again. It started heating up. Messaged them right away. They said, yes, yeah, on your calendar. Um, so, and again, if you have a lot of context from the previous conversation, things just, it just gets better. I, I, there's no other way to say it. it just everything just feels better. It's a good experience for your customers as well. Yeah, this is a great point. Like I think a, a lot of attention goes to top of funnel signals, which are important for driving new business. But um, once you're in a deal cycle, you know, time kills all deals. And if you see the CRO engaging in the deal room, you should be, you know, messaging them as soon as possible. And so you should be tracking the intent signals that happen across the life cycle of a deal. And then of course we know that signals are so important when it comes to retaining and expanding customers as well. So I, I love the highlight and I love that we're kind of shouting this out as part of our signal partner program. Um, yes, Meredith, shameless plug in the chat to go check out more about Aligned and how you could bring those signals into focus. Um, Appreciate it. I, know, I know we only have five minutes left. There were some great questions that were submitted ahead of time by folks in the audience. Um, one thing that's top of mind for folks is how do you implement signals without coming across creepy or like you're invading people's privacy? <laughs> you don't tell them, hey, I saw you on the website. Contextualize it. Contextualize it. If you see that, go find more reasons to go after them. So example of what I shared earlier, I didn't tell Maggie that, hey, you were on the website or I saw you signed up or your AE signed up. It was a personalized message, but that just told me that, hey, even if that message is not the best personalized, it should get a response, right? I've sent multiple personalized emails. They all don't always get open or responded to. So I think it's that. Don't say, saw you on the website. If you're using that as a signal, make it better. That's your indication to do some hard work. Instead of going after 50 accounts, 
go after those accounts and do as much as you can. Again, nothing's a blue pill, red pill, but if I, I if I if I have a little bit of confidence, maybe this is a better strike zone. That's the world you want to be in. Yeah, um, love that. I think yeah, there's there's ways to use the signal for relevance without you know your your buyers feeling super creeped out by it. Um, my company isn't PLG. How should I be applying the signal led framework? I think this is a common question because it it yeah. does feel like this is more in the wheelhouse of PLG companies. Yeah. So let's clarify. So a lot of my, a lot of what I've been speaking about ha is PLG driven because we're PLG org. Before Align, I was at Bender. Uh, this is this is documented. Um, uh, ben Staley was our head of demand gen. I was hired at Bender because Bender, within the year of me joining there, was going to build a PLG org. So they wanted me to test, take over the inbound team and test out if we can create free PLG leads. So guess what we did? We did the exact same framework that I showed you. And we bought a tool called Nevatic, which is interactive demo tours. We used to send Nevatic product tours to people and see if they completed a certain level of score. If they did, that's our signal to go after that account, that company. Vendor at that time did not even have a product line. Vendor was a service company. Guys, we did that for a service company within one quarter, inherited the worst performing team. This is documented on LinkedIn. Um, the team's results went up to 99% qualified and 110% of their meetings looking great. Inbound reps were booking outbound meetings, and I was like, "Yeah, why would you stop?" Like, we're doing we're we're doing extra things. So, things require technology. It, yes, it requires an investment to buy something. How can we orchestrate and create signals, quote unquote? Um, we actually used to do that at Dooley as well. All the people that were product signups that would not engage, we'd send them the product to see if you know if there's still some interest. Um, and yeah, so that's like a core example. Two steps. All the um, CRM orchestration framework, map accounts, and start sending them things and see if they're engaging, whether it's product tours or gifts or things like that. See if they're open to you and warming up to you. That's your biggest signal. Saad, I feel like we could go on for another hour on this topic, and maybe we should. We should maybe turn this into a series because I think you are just a wealth of knowledge. Um, I am conscious of time, though. We only have one minute. And if there's like one piece of advice you could give folks who are who are thinking about kicking off their signal based strategy, what what is it? Yeah, there is absolutely a lot of noise. And I feel like everybody is just when, whenever something happens, it becomes an engagement hack. Don't listen to me, but respectfully, don't listen to everybody that thinks they have a right to talk about signal when they haven't even done outbound when the. There's some CROs that haven't built out one engine in years. They're like, oh yeah, this is just a fad. Respectfully speaking, for a lot of organizations, it's not. I think we're still at the first mover advantage. So try, test, pivot, talk to talk to experts. Maybe, maybe it might not work for your org, but it might just be something that might give you a little bit to work with, something new. Great message. Ex just start experimenting and and you know, track your learnings and iterate from there. Kind of works for everything. Um, okay. I know we covered a lot. Appreciate the audience. You guys have been great. Thank you for asking all your questions. We're going to send some um, resources from Saad in a follow-up email along with the recording. And if you have any other questions, Saad, where can people connect with you? Yeah. Very active on LinkedIn. So shoot me a message, shoot me a DM. Uh, might be a little bit slow to respond, but I promise I will. Awesome. And if you want to talk more about signal-based strategy, definitely join the community. If you are not in the community today, pocus.com slash community. Um, and yeah, check out our signal marketplace to learn more about the integration between Aligned and Pocus. Also follow Pocus team. They're creating a lot of content and educating the market. I think Alexa is a badass CEO as well. Yeah. So yeah. And I absolutely love working with Andy. Uh, and so, Thank you, yeah. Saad. We didn't they're, pay they're that everybody. <laughs> yeah, am I getting paid for this? Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, and have a great rest of your day. Bye.